Here he is, one half of the team, Donnie and Dolly. Check television weekdays, 10 to noon. It's our Friday regular Canucks insider, Mr. Rick Dollywall. How we doing, Rick? How you doing, sir? Just a pleasure to talk to you, uh, two every Friday. Absolutely an honor. Oh, I'm included today. That's good. Wow, good stuff. Uh, so big news for the Vancouver Canucks. Tyler Myers, we hear today he's going to miss two to four weeks. We know we have some other injured guys. Let's just start on our poll question. Ricky, is the Myers injury forcing them to up the search for a defenseman, either on the waiver wire, which could be pretty flush this weekend, or on yep. the trade market? Well, first of all, Myers out two to four weeks. Uh, you saw him fall awkwardly in Abbotsford the other night. And when he did fall, I kind of said to myself, hey, you know what? That didn't look good. And he kind of got up slow. So two to four weeks. Uh, yeah, look, you couple in. Myers, and then you couple in with Dermott, and you already got a blue line that everybody in the city is uh, obviously hoping that the team would have improved over the summer. Uh, they tried. They didn't do it. Um, and now you're thinking the last place in the world this club needs injuries before game one of the regular season, before you start the season with the five-game road trip is the blue line. Um, let me say this. Remember they were in on Calvin DeHaan. Remember they were poking around Ethan Bear. And then I was told, you know what? They got about 1.3 million uh, guys uh, to play with on the cap uh, heading into the season. And I and I always said they're going to wait for the waiver wire. Uh, Thomas and I, uh, Thomas Drantz and I uh, did an article today, and we talked a little bit about that. Look, there's still a possibility you can pick up uh, a defenseman on the waiver wire, but it's a little bit more remote today than it was three weeks ago. Adding a contract and a salary would be exceedingly difficult for the club to manage at this juncture, given Vancouver's cap, the roster uncertainty, all the injuries, to almost 20 million tied up in injuries, guys. Um, so, look, uh, they're going to scour everything. They're going to try and look at every possible angle they can, guys, if they can somehow find an upgrade for the interim, the short term. Uh, you have to think uh, they would look at it. But uh, like we talked about, the injuries, the cap situation, the LTI are with Furlan, you know, the final cuts, who's staying, who's going. There's, I mean, it's just a really a confusing time to try to yeah. put the jigsaw puzzle together. Ricky Dermott, do, what, what's what's the word on Dermott for opening night? Like, is he going to play? I, Does he have a chance to play uh, out I, of the gate, or is he going to miss games for sure? Intel is really tough on uh, Dermot. I'm just, I'm not going to lie to you. And yep. Thomas and I, we poked around and, uh, you know. Jeff really told us he yet. thought it's a head injury uh, at this point. That, uh, well, that's, for sure it's a head well, yeah. Okay. yeah, but we saw that at practice, Matt. We all know it's a upper body head injury. We just don't know how long he's going to be out. And they haven't used the C word concussion yet. So we're kind of just waiting uh, and waiting and waiting and waiting. So look, guys. Uh, all the doom and gloom about the injuries, Myers, Dermott, at mm -hmm. least they got positive news today. Besser and McKayev are going to go on the trip. Besser could practice full contact on Sunday. I was told a week ago that Besser is going to be really working hard to beat that three- to four-week deadline that was given originally. I was told he was on schedule. Now we're told uh, he's kind of going to beat that schedule. When it comes to McKayev, I was told on day one, not serious, um, he's feeling fine. He's starting to skate, uh, but the Canucks are very cautious with this. They got that second look with the doctors. Uh, they were looking for a micro tear. They did not find it. Uh, the player has been uh, fine since day one, but it's, uh, you know, we're not letting you on the ice. We're not letting you do this. You're an important part. We want to be 100% sure. Uh, that kind of feeling I got uh, when it comes to McCab. So listen, but Besser and McCabe are not going on this trip because they're not going to play on it. They're going on it because there's a pretty good chance at some point on this trip that you probably will see one of those two guys um, or maybe both. What are you hearing about the trading of Furland's contract? What, what, you know, is that a real possibility for them? Is that just for dollars and cents? Is that just a financial yeah. thing or is well, there a cap uh, benefit to it? Yeah, and, and so I'm going to tell you this, first of all. Um, they've been trying to move that contract, not not in the last 10 days, for quite some time. And when I asked Jim Rutherford about that a couple of weeks ago, he said, usually towards the end of camp, 
uh, you start poking and feeling around and see. And and here's another one. I, I talked to the agent earlier this week. He he's not aware because obviously the player is 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 retired. He's not going to play, so he wouldn't hear that because it's not an active player. So I understand from the agent's perspective, he wouldn't be hearing that. But obviously, guys, look, the, the contract's not insured. Um, it's an LTIR situation. They it, they, they didn't just start poking around trying to get rid of moving uh, Furlan's uh, contract in the last 10 days. It's been an ongoing process. you got to find a team that's going to take that hit. And so let's go back to Sean Monaghan in Calgary and I and and, and then moving him to Montreal. Um, these things aren't easy. you got to attach uh, some sort of sweetener, uh, you know, uh, along with it. And are the Canucks willing to do that? There's so many. And, and when it comes to uh, Furland, I, I can just tell you this. They didn't just start this recently. I am, you know, this is something they probably want to try to move for uh, quite some time. Do you think they would be reticent to put Tyler Myers on LTIR to start the season? Because that would mean a three-week absence for him. Um, yeah. Do you think they're going to hope upon hopes that it's on the early side of things and that they don't, oh. even though they get the cat, it could be a two-pronged thing. They get, they would, That's it. They get to use them, but they don't get the cap relief. So you they know, don't get the cap relief. What, what's your instinct uh, tell I, you there? Well, I'll tell you what it is. They need Tyler Myers. They need, mm-hmm. Look, I don't care what you think of the Canucks blue line, but Myers, he, he chews up a ton of minutes. And when you take out – a guy that chews up that many minutes, whether you like the player or not, and whether you like the contract or not, every coach that he has played for in Vancouver has played a ton of. He gets to play a ton. So I, I, I understand your question, Blake, uh, but I would uh, humbly suggest to you, if I'm Bruce Boudreau, I would probably want that guy in the lineup ASAP. Um, let's be honest, because you look at the right side right now, and, and you know what? And we'll take tonight's... Uh, uh, we'll take tonight's preseason blue line. Uh, Shan, Poom, and Burroughs is your right side, right? So yeah. I, I think they need Tyler Myers back as, as quick as possible. I, I just, just a freak uh, injury the other night, Blake, and uh, I, I saw him go down awkwardly. And I don't even know what he tripped over, but he tripped in, in the um, – and it, this is just not good. I mean, I, I look at all these injuries, and Donnie, Donnie's, uh, he just says it to me all the time. It's, it's just 50 years – of uh, uh, bad luck continues and it just you know think about it you know there's Besser he comes out in camp does this great interview and and every he's chomping at the bit to go and he feels refreshed he he's energized he's energetic he wants to get going and he gets a what what, what was it guys did it happen on a drill or something and yeah. just a freak of nature and, and look at McKayev right he gets hit from in the Calgary game he gets hit you know, awkwardly, the knee goes, and um, it's just, I, I, I just, I, I, I don't understand it. We're not even at game one, and they are dealing with these types of injuries. It's, but, it's, but you're it's right, quite... though. The good news is that's looking like one or two games maximum for both of those that's players it. based on the timeline, yeah. timelines we're seeing. So that's the good news. Yeah, I... One other bit of bad news for one guy with Jason Dickinson uh, not playing in this final preseason game. Did, did that tell you something about what they saw, seen out of Dickinson so far this preseason is is this another guy that they their hands are tied because they can't probably trade him but like what's the future of dickinson here with this uh with this well, team i'm going to tell you something nicely forget about uh, dickinson the guy that had pushed him to the wing and into the press box is niles amont mm-hmm. and and i was told a couple of days ago the canucks absolutely uh love this player uh, the coaching staff and management as well character kid he's getting a hard hard long look at the fourth line center role. And I'll tell you, I mean, he's big, he can skate. I, I will not be one surprised person if he is your fourth line center on opening night. Um, just a character kid, him and Carlson. I, I know they're, ha- they're hanging around guys. Final cuts. They're both here. I know Carlson's probably here because of the injuries to Besser and McCabe, but he's been uh, everything they've asked him to be as well. Uh, very well liked. Uh, both these guys uh, never played. Uh, and the Canucks got it. You got to give them credit when Colorado did not, uh, sign Amon. The Canucks were on that right away, and they got this player. Um, I'm going to tell you a little story about uh, Amon that I got from Sweden this week. When he was 15, he broke his hip, and during rehab, he would get the key from the local manager every night at the rink, at the local rink. He'd sneak into the rink and work on rebuilding his stride. You know, this is a driven kid, a lot of character, good kid, and I, I, I just think with Carlson and Amon, you know, the the Canucks new regime gets criticized a lot for not bringing in a lot of new blood since they've taken over. But if you can, you can, if you can hit on one of these two, or mm-hmm. if you can hit on both of them, 
that'll be pretty good for the new regime uh, uh, for Amon and Carlson. I can't imagine Carlson makes the club, uh, no, but no, he, you, as he, you say, I, I that he's hanging him. around, that he's hanging around to Final Cut, so uh, a terrific showing. Do you know, Ricky, whether it's going to be 13 forwards and 8 D? That or I, have, do... I haven't. They, they're going to sit down this. Uh, Thomas talked uh, about this. They're going to sit down this weekend, and mm-hmm. he said the final cuts have not been made. The structure of, you know, how many D and how many forwards has not been made yet. So they'll sit down after tonight's game and okay. obviously management with the coaches staff, and they'll try to figure all that stuff out. Uh, Matty. Okay. Uh, we mentioned Amon uh, looking good on the fourth line. Uh, Dakota Joshua, I said to Jeff yesterday, gosh, uh, for a new player, and I realize he's a fourth liner, but for a new player whom the Canucks had, you know, some great things to say when they Allie signed yeah. him, really think he's a, a late bloomer and that they're on to something there. It was a very quiet, and not a lot of chat around Dakota Joshua until the Abbotsford game. When yeah. he apparently was supposed to stick up for teammates a little more than what he did, our buddy even Ferraro mentioned that to us when we were talking about him today. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, well, yeah. So let me let me tell you this: when when Nurse uh, did the high uh, stick on a Hoglander, that that's that was a perfect uh, uh, opportunity for uh, Dakota to go talk to Nurse and say, "Hey, buddy, don't do that. That's one of our skilled players." And I think the next day at Canucks practice, he wasn't in the uh, top four lines. And maybe that was a message from the team that, you know, and Boudreaux talked about pushback. And, you know, the guy that impressed me a lot in Abbotsburg was Tanner Pearson. Twice he stuck up for his teammates. And, look, the Canucks are not a heavy set team. They, they haven't been a heavy set team for many years. But you that doesn't – look, you got Shen, you got Burroughs. You got uh, uh, Joshua. You got three guys that, you know, do a pretty good job or should be doing a good job of sticking up for players. But I think, look, they everything from what I've been told organizationally, they like Joshua. They like him a lot. I can tell you this, both of you guys, that when he became a free agent, there was there was a double-digit teams after him. And, you know, double-digit teams after him. Uh, he brings uh, – he can skate. He brings, uh, obviously, size and grit. Um, you're hoping he can kill penalties the whole nine yards. But uh, I think the other night in Abbotsford, that was a, a perfect opportunity to – I was kind of disappointed myself, and I was watching. I, I go, hey, guys, that's a skilled guy, Hoglander. Who's going after Nurse? You know, and so I, th- I think the team sent him a message, and I think that um, – I think he'll be fine. I know the club likes him a lot, but uh, you, you certainly – you certainly want to see – and then when Patterson, I, I, I talked to the NHL about that night and, and the uh, nurse uh, high stick on Hoglander. The, I was told there was numerous in, incidents <clears throat> that the NHL looked at from that game in Abbotsford, but none of them were thought to be enough for a supplementary uh, discipline. Uh, obviously, the check from behind on uh on Patterson did not look good. I mean, like uh, visually it didn't look very good, but uh, the NHL did not think there was a, a suspension there. Uh, another long weekend, uh, another opportunity for the Canucks to sign a player theoretically <laughs> and Bo Horvat. Yeah. Uh, they, they've made yeah. a habit of that over the course of some long weekends this summer. Um, I mean, that doesn't seem like it's imminent at all. And so it nope. looks like Ricky, we're going to start the season with the captain unsigned and, I'll listen to anybody who wants to tell me that it's not a story, only it is a story because the closer we get to the trade deadline, that's right. They have to make that Johnny Goudreau decision. So that's um, right. So when does it happen? Do you think between now and then, if it's going to happen? Well, and I got to be careful what I say because, uh, Oh, the media was wrong on Miller. Oh, the media. Hey, hold it a second. Let me go back to Miller for a second at the (laughs) NHL draft. Miller and the Canucks were miles apart. They closed the gap in the summer because there were some contracts that were uh, two of them in Calgary, including Caudry and Huberto, where the Canucks, uh, you know, they changed their philosophy on Miller. And they kind of said, look, these teams are taking risks. Uh, Caudry is 32 years old and got seven years. If the Flames are taking a risk on a 32-year-old for seven years, maybe the Canucks altered their views and changed, and they did. So things change over a negotiation. We are allowed to say the two sides are far apart. And if they do eventually sign... That's really nice. They sign. But if you say they're far apart, they're far apart. If they're close, we always say they're close. If they're, you know, there's work to do, we say there's work to do. In this case, it is very simple. 
there is work to do before Bo Horvat is signed. Um, they could have, they talked all summer. Here we are a few days before the regular season opener. There's no deal. Everything we've been told, there's work to do before a deal gets done. You, you've heard the comparable. I mentioned uh, 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 Sean Couturier about two, three weeks ago as a possible comparison. Elliot Friedman dropped it, and and seven point seven. I was told weeks and weeks ago that the ask is in the sevens by 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 Horvat, mm-hmm. and it's quite clearly the ask is in the sevens. And um, you know he's a UFA, this a captain of a team in a hot Canadian market and uh, the reality is that it's not done and you're right though Blake you you make a very good point um, is is Bo going to be able uh, to block that that white noise out about the contract and be a captain for a team in a hot Canadian market people it, it's hard to do it's hard to do and uh, it's not easy being a captain as you saw in Winnipeg where the captain had the seat taken away uh, it's hard to be a captain yeah. in a Canadian market there's a lot of pressure never mind uh, the pressure of being a captain in your UFA year hopefully they get together they sign it if both sides want to do it this is a very important player that's a day since he arrived in Vancouver it was a great draft pick by the Canucks by the way and you know what and the greatest thing about Bo Horvat, I'll always admire. Well, he's first of all, he's great on and off the ice. But, you know, there was some, remember the early years, there was uh, questions about his skating. And he yep. improved his skating. He showed everybody that you can improve your skating uh, yep. after you get drafted. And you can get better after you get drafted. The hardest part in the in the world is not reaching the NHL. It's staying in the NHL. That's the hardest part. Well, he's a Getting pro. better. Yep. Yeah. He, he developed and grew. And he's so good in the community. Uh, you know, let me, uh, let me tell you this Kuzmenko story because I'm going to tie it into Bo quickly. Let me get this in. Kuzmenko... Uh, recently informed his agent, Dan Milstein, I think it was probably last week, he said, look, I don't want to hear anything about anything on social media. I don't want to be, he told his agent, I am laser focused on my play. I want to shut all the outside noise out. Don't send me stuff from social media. I'm not looking at social media. You know, I, and, and Bruce Boudreaux said this about Kuzmenko. He said he's, he's, his personality is magnetic. He is a beautiful personality. Uh, people who smile and laugh like that at twenty four seven, like he does, special personality. We don't do that in the media because our industry is uh, up in flames. But anyways, that's a different story. Uh, <laughs> anyways, could, let me get back to Kuzmenko. Uh, mm-hmm. Wonderful personality. I love what he does in the offensive zone. He has come as advertised. But I love the fact that he told his agent, "Listen to me." Told his agent. He said, I don't want to hear anything about social media. I don't want to hear anything. I'm laser focused. I want to be the best I can. And, you know, a buddy of mine, uh, Jerry Johansson, who's a scout, uh, Jerry asked me to talk to last summer uh, some of his uh, kids that are going to be drafted in the NHL uh, uh, about media and cell phones and all that. And I told the kids, I said, you know, because we've seen Blake and, 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 and Matt, we've seen NHL players screw up their careers because of the cell phone videos, pubs, nightclubs, all that crap. <laughs> I, told, I told the kids, I said, I said you want to see a model Twitter account? Go, go look at Bo Horvat. It's always about, uh, what is it always about? His Twitter account, family, wife kids he's not in a pub he's not in a nightclub posting videos and pictures i said you want to do i said if you i told the kids i said if you want a twitter account then go look at go look at him and you want to be a good hockey players in the future and good human beings on and off the ice go look at the sedine twins and so there's there's a lot of good examples guys uh, of of, of these guys and that's what bo is Uh, he reminds me vancouver's been lucky since he got drafted here he's been great on and off the ice uh, that damn Twitter is towards one said. Uh, I think you mean mm-hmm. agent Jerry Johansson, right, Rick? What did I say? You said scout, scout but that's yeah. okay. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Jerry Johansson, good guy. Him and Scott Bonner, uh, uh, good friends of mine. Yes. Yeah, he's yes. an agent. Yeah, yes. he's an yes. agent. No, we know. We know. We know. Yeah. Uh, you have a tidbit well, on I'm DPF. I'm shocked it wasn't Blake that pointed out that mistake, and it was Matt. No, I, I, I don't take any joy in pointing out your mistakes. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, cut. Hey, hold a couple things. I want to get this in. Uh, before we go, because I know you guys are going to cut me off, but Price is no, 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 dying no, no. to cut me off. No, yeah, no, no, no. Got, we have we a lot of time in the world for you. One player that never gets enough credit, and, and you talk about players that are still sticking around Vancouver right now. I'm going to tell you guys something. Sheldon Dries never gets noticed by the fans or the media, but I'm going to tell you guys the coaching staff and the management love this guy. Never cheats. 
on the ice, never cheats for scoring, never cheats on effort or defensive play, uh, plays with structure, can play center of the wing. He's sticking around for the final cuts for a reason, guys. Very well liked. Um, I just like those guys that work hard. And they don't necessarily always get uh, acknowledgement from the media or the fans, but I'm going to tell you something right now. I was told last night uh, the the coaching staff and the management just love this guy, uh, whether he ends up in Abbotsford or not. I thought he was uh, admirable when he uh, was brought up late last season, but Sheldon Dries, I just, uh, you know, we talked about Carlson and Amon being late cuts. Well, Sheldon Dries could have been sent to Abbotsford a long time yeah. ago. He wasn't. You know, they really, really, really like this guy. Right, he works Ricky, very quickly on Di Pietro. Very quickly on Di Pietro. You said okay. he had a tidbit uh, there. No, I want to get two. I, no, I want to get two things in. Sonny Milano Canucks offered him a PTO before he went to Calgary. He got cut, but it's not going to happen in Vancouver. I just want to get that out of the way. Canucks have three goaltenders. They're going to cut one. Uh, Delia Silovs or uh, Di, Di Pietro. If it's Di Pietro, uh, he's going to be sent to the East Coast Hockey League. But I was told last night. The, the, the Di Pietro camp, along with the Canucks, are looking for a better place uh, for him to play in than the East Coast Hockey League. And I'll tell you why, guys. If there's an injury to Demko or Martin, up comes Delia. And then Abbotsford's going to be looking for someone too, right? So you, if, 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 if Di Pietro gets called up uh, for any reason or injury, you want him to be playing in a better league, stopping pucks from better shooters than the East Coast League. So they're working on that. I just wanted to get that in. Marvelous. Uh, Rick, you're the best. Have a wonderful long weekend here. Thank you for this. We'll catch up next Friday, and we'll have yeah. games to talk about, buddy. We'll yeah, have and, and news maybe, events have coming out of yeah. games. Look forward to it. Yeah. And maybe all 68-point guys can get $10 million next week. Yeah, please. oh, here we go. That's, that debate will just resolve itself just, naturally, it Ricky. Rage. Rage. That was right. Was I, I think we have a theme for the season with Rick Dollywood. Yeah.